Good morning and happy Holy Friday! The video of today will be about one masterpiece made by Caravaggio. Last week I created a poll on Instagram and I asked you to choose between two masterpieces made by him, one Bacchus and the other one Medusa, and you choose the second one. So the video today will be about masterpiece Medusa by Caravaggio. Well, I have to apologize because I promised this video uh, will be ready before, but I had some problem with my computer, as you can see. This is what happened. By the way, um, today I'm not gonna talk about the story and the life of the artist. I'm not gonna talk about this masterpiece under an artistic point of view. I just want to tell you the story of this beautiful woman that was Medusa who became a monster and how Perseus defeated her. This is a Greek mythological story and I hope you will enjoy it. Okay, let's start from the beginning. In Greek mythology, Medusa was a monster, a gorgon, and usually is described as a woman with living venomous snakes in, the, in place of a hair. In a late version of the Medusa's myth, which is related by the Roman poet Ovid, he wrote a book called Metamorphosis. Medusa was originally a stunning, beautiful woman, and Poseidon, god of the sea, raped her in the Athena's temple. So, the enraged goddess Athena transformed Medusa's beautiful hair to snakes and made her face so terrible that the mere scythe was enough to turn any unlockers to stone. In most versions of the story, she was beheaded by the hero Perseus. So, it's very important to get to know him a little bit. Perseus is the Greek mythological uh, legendary founder of Mycenae, the son of Zeus and Janae, grandson of Acrisius, king of Argos, and founder of Mycenae. All these titles they remind me the ones of Daenerys Targaryen. First of her name, Gian Borant, Khaleesi of the Great Grassy, Breakers of Chains and Mother of Dragons. But let's go back to our hero, Perseus son of Zeus and Danae, who was the daughter of Acrisius, king of Argos. King Acrisius was really struggling to have a son, so he went to an oracle, the oracle of Delphi, and this oracle warned him that he would one day be killed by his daughter's son. As you can imagine, this king was not so happy with the idea of having a grandson. So he decided to close his daughter in a bronze chamber in the courtyard of his palace and this was in order to keep Dane childless. God Zeus, who was always falling in love and traveling a lot the life of girls, entered in the room of Dane through the shape of a shower of gold and she got pregnant. As soon after their child was born, Perseus, our hero. When King Acrisius discovered it, obviously he was not happy, and he did something very questionable. For being a father, he decided to cast the two into the sea in a wooden chest. God Zeus, who felt a little bit guilty for the situation, he decided to help the beautiful Dane and his son directing the wooden chest in the island of Serifo. They were saved by a fisherman who also raised the boy, Perseus. When Perseus was grown, the king of the island fell in love with his beautiful mother. Our hero was not so happy about it because he considered that king less than honorable, so he decided to protect his mother from him. So the king, to eliminate Perseus and be free to love his mother, he plotted against him. And he asked to Perseus, if you are so brave, why don't you go to kill that deathly, terrible monster, Medusa, whose gaze turned people into stone? And he demanded his head. 
obviously the king thought that Perseus would have died during this intent and that he could finally love the beautiful Danae. And let's go back to our friend, so Medusa. Do you remember that she was a beautiful woman and she was turned into a monster by the very angry goddess Athena? So this goddess was the first in offering her help to Perseus. Perseus received lots of gifts by god and goddess. Zeus, for example, who probably was still feeling guilty, gave him a sword, a very powerful sword. Hades gave him the Elm of Darkness in order to hide. Hermes lent Perseus winged sandals to fly and goddess Athena gave him a shield. So Perseus could proceed to the Gorgon's cave. In the cave he found Medusa sleeping. By viewing Medusa's reflection in his polished shield he safely approached and cut off her head. From her neck sprang Pegasus, the winged horse, the result of Poseidon and Medusa's mating. What a family tree! But Medusa was not alone, she was the only mortal Gorgon, but there were other two Gorgons immortal. He could escape using his Elm of Darkness and flying away with his winged shoes. Once safe, the intention was the one of coming back to his mother. But on the way back, so many things happened that this video could last for one week. For example, he saved a girl called Andromeda and he married her. He um, defeated so many other monsters and he also became the king of Mycenae. But let's have a look to the masterpiece by Caravaggio. This painting was made in 1597 and it's now conserved in the Uffizi Gallery of Florence. Caravaggio was an Italian painter active mainly in Rome which had a formative influence on Baroque paintings. He is very famous for employing a close physical observation, very realistic, with a dramatic use of chiaroscuro that came to be known as tenebrism. This technique consists in darkening shadows and transfixing subjects in a bright shaft of light. He expressed crucial moments and scenes, often um, concerning with violence, torture and death. Medusa probably is one of the most famous masterpieces of Caravaggio and it was gifted in 1597 to the Grand Duke of Tuscany. For this reason it's nowadays in Florence. Caravaggio's ideas of using a convex shield as a canvas was to paint the scene from Perseus' point of view. And it is the exact moment in which Medusa's reflection appeared on his shield right before he killed her. The artist plays with the concept by replacing Medusa's face with his own face as an indication of his immunity to her dreadful gaze. Or maybe he saw the reality and uh, he represented his interior feelings and anxieties. This painting is one of my favorite, as beautiful as creepy. Blood pours down in many streaks, while the mouth is wide open and showing us the feet. The eyebrows are curved so the eyes are amplified and the expression is terrifying. The level of tenorism and realism are creating a three-dimensional appearance. So at the end, on which side are you? Do you prefer our hero Perseus or the poor misunderstood character Medusa? Well, thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed my video. If you want to keep choosing between masterpieces, you should follow my Instagram page, San Florence Tours. If you want to keep watching my video, subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, San Florence Tours. Or if you want to book or ask questions about tours in Florence, 
just uh, uh, check my webpage www.sunflorencestores.it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you soon.